Welcome back to SL Chennai Speaks Out Season 2. This is our third round. It's called Bowl Out, which is a virtual crossfire between both these teams. Your time starts now, Nitesh. Yeah. My first question to you, sir, is that you have said that uh, uh, the committee is now in a monitoring stage and the Supreme Court has appointed you to monitor it. And as well, you've also said that uh, there is a directive to all the uh, school institutions I mean, and educational institutions in their admission and application form itself to get an anti-ragging certificate. I want to know what necessary steps have you actually taken to ensure effective implementation of the said schemes because it clearly is said to have failed with the latest tax reports. If, if you are asking me in my capacity as chairman of the monitoring committee, my authority is big zero. Authority, there is no authority. Because there is a feeling that a lot of people uh, directly ask me, why don't you take action against We can't. We, we operate to the HRD ministry, Human yes. Resource Development Ministry. Ministry acts to the state governments. Yes. So I'm not trying to wash my hands the matter, but that authority I would like to exercise. I, having been head of the CBI, it, that doesn't deter me if I'm given the authority to intervene. But that is impractical, and I do not uh, want to usurp somebody else's authority. But it is the HRD ministry which uh, recommends action to the state governments. State governments, again, again, pass it down the line. So naturally, implementation ultimately will depend uh, on the, uh, the lower formation, especially colleges, the principals, and state police. Yeah, the police, if, if there's a case and the police doesn't intervene in spite of the, I mean, a college uh, complaint, then there is something really wrong. At the same time, police are, are an embarrassed uh, situation, embarrassing situation. They can't proactive unless there's a major uh, violence within the campus, uh, so they can't, if they come in there, police are a red rack as far as the colleges are concerned. That's the problem here. So wh why is uh, every reaction to ragging, a ragging incident, a knee-jerk reaction? Why has it been that we have repeatedly had knee-jerk reactions to incidents of ragging? That, that is why, first of all, there is no uh, consciousness on the part of the college authorities. Second, there is no penalty for, for, for inaction. That's the problem. There is no penalty. So. I think if ultimately some police officer, some police station registers a case of abetment to ragging, slaps a charge on a college management, till that happens, I don't think the management will ever bother about it. Are the principals waiting for that, ma'am, for the principal to be arrested so that they'll wake up from their slumber? No, I would go back to my proactive uh, argument and ask the media, uh, Ms. Ramya, why can't you highlight freshers parties which happen as we, we do have a freshers party and where they are really welcome and we make them feel so comfortable. The interaction between the seniors and the freshers takes place in such a nice manner. Maybe if you highlight such issues, then uh, other colleges can take uh, leave out of this uh, book and see that there are different ways of doing it. Maybe they will feel ashamed of doing those heinous crimes. May, it may not happen overnight, but uh -huh. at least it will lay the platform for that. True. but. Uh Going by the dictates of news, we have certain criteria uh, before we can cover an event. No, swine if flu in Kerala become, comes uh, on the first page. True. But uh, something like this means then uh, it would uh, give a lot of impetus to the students who are doing something but nice. Ramya, would, you, would you also just to add on since you know I also belong to the media, uh, is that news at all? It, when, it if, wouldn't if, be news. If, if freshers are welcomed, exactly. yes. then that's the way it should be. It ought that's to be. So is that news? Be. Yes. No, That's the way it should be. It won't be news. But Man I, bites dog. Uh, we've yes. got a jury member who wants to, in fact, shoot questions. Uh, also, I'm told, sir, that uh, you introduced the concept of black boxes. But of course, we know, like, even if the air crashes, black boxes are not easily found. <laughs> but it is found in everybody's principal's uh, office. Is it empty or is it full, sir? No, it is empty. Okay. <laughs> because the freshers have not come. Please so explain. So Please explain. We are talking about all this uh, uh, ragging. Would you like to direct that? your questions to any of the panelists? No, no, no. In general, I want okay. to talk to you. So ragging and all that we are talking about, no, no, even though there is a rule, there is an act, everything is there, everybody is involved, the whole society is involved in stopping this ragging. So a law alone cannot stop it, the principal alone cannot stop it, the, the, the student alone cannot stop it, the media uh, alone cannot stop it, so everybody, even the parents should be involved in that. So they must guide them. So follow-up is also necessary from the parent where he is going, what he is doing. That is why we so want the parent to come exactly. to sign that under so the undertaking. Even some, some, some of the rural colleges, it may be in the city college, they have awareness. Whereas in the rural colleges, the parent may not be knowing yeah. what the student are doing, I, where I, he is I going, what he is studying. I have a specific question with reference to that to Sir. Uh, sir has himself accepted that uh, there are states which are openly flouting the Supreme Court mandatory directions. Now I want to know, Sir, now 
you have submitted a committee report. The UGC has given an entire analysis, and these are the reports. They've even given, if they've even said, we'll give incentives to institutions who actually uh, curb bragging. And impose penalties. And yes, impose penalties. Everything is there, sir. So if it, if it is rest finally on the state government whether to implement or not, and if certain state governments decide, OK, fine, I'm not going to implement, certain institutions say, OK, I'm not going to do anything, what is the remedy then? Then are all these guidelines just an eyewash, sir? No, no that's, not, that's not the intention. The point is, the state, I don't think any state government uh, says I will not implement. Then they will be hauled up by the Supreme Court. Yes, it's, sir. It's so a, they, so they, no, these are mandatory. It's, it's, these it's are a, mandatory yeah, and it's, Supreme it's, Court it, can enforce it. It is insidious sabotage of the whole thing. They just don't want to act. Uh, because I don't think you can haul up any government for, uh, say which, uh, for, for saying that you will not implement. It will definitely say yes. We have first come, we have done this, we have appointed anti lying committee, we have told the principal, we have taken action again. They will say statistics. Statistics are very much at variance with common perceptions, like uh, anti-corruption. If the CBI or the director of vigilance ask them, they will produce 1,000 cases of uh, corruption where they have taken action. The common perception is whatever law you bring in, there are people who will break it. That, that's the point. So as you said, no, if it starts with college management, if they implement it uh, sternly, it is quite possible the intensity of the problem will come down. That's important. We are not aiming at the moon. We are aiming, want the most practical. Let the college in the colleges where, especially the medical colleges are the worst. The medical colleges are unbelievable. That a doctor, a prospective doctor, is going to inflict cruelty on a fellow students. What kind of a doctor will he make? This is the question which uh, intrigues all of us. Yes, medical intrigue. colleges are the worst in this country. And when we took it up with the Indian Medical Council, they, uh, they threw up their hands in desperation. We, we can't do anything. So this can't do anything about quack doctors also. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Notorious yeah. medical yeah. students. Yeah, so these if, I'm, if, I'm, if, we, uh, if I may ask, uh, punishment is a deterrent, basically. Okay. That is how our system is, uh, functions. Yeah. Why is it so difficult to impose penalties on erring colleges or students or parents? Yeah, well, what kind of penalties can impose in education institutions? Withdrawal of recognition. Right. Uh, or then stopping of grant. Many of these colleges uh, are not bothered about these grants so being so They have enough capitation fees. Publicized. They, they collect enough capitation fees. And and there's a procedure. There's a procedure to follow. Uh, this, this is what the medical colleges said. IMC, Indi Institute, uh, the Indian Medical Council told me in the committee. I said, why don't you withdraw recognition? He said, it's a, we have no authority. We have to go up to the government of India. And that, like, I shouldn't say the, the most controversial thing about capital punishment. Can you enforce, I mean, the capital punishment has been awarded to certain individuals. Yes, Still, nobody would like to. Yes, sir. As a principal, I would like to say, regarding the ragging, ragging most of the students so go based on the movies. So whatever the movie, they, they are... They are absolutely right. They are... They, are, uh, they glorify. Growing up, growing by. Yes. And these fellows do not have the... Do not know the consequences of it. They play it in the colleges. So they do not know. Actually, they do not know the consequences. Based on the tone they play, they turn only they you come to that And all the colleges. That's exactly where the entire thing, that's what this is. Okay, fine. So say, suppose a student has been influenced, he comes to college. It is the duty of the institution, yes. okay, why don't you protect that student who has not been influenced? Exactly. The, so it's the, the duty of the institution, you have to, you have to establish exactly. uh, uh, psychologists, you have to establish counselors who actually take an initiative to do anything. Is, uh, but all these all the things colleges, rest on paper, nothing has been no, implemented in any of the institutions. All the colleges are implementing. As per the version of the committee, every college is implementing everything each and every word has been implemented especially in the I deny so is it a case of operation the, successful patient the, dead huh? is it a case of operation successful patient dead no, all the colleges no, are implementing perfect ragging. ideal society and yet people and are dying or bragging no, people are being is, beat to death even accident takes place that we cannot stop that ma'am how many parents actually have control over their children <laughs> that's, that's a very, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, actually. because that these the days problem, I main think main uh, parental control on children is uh, definitely. Uh, so if a parent cannot exercise, if a father cannot control his son, how will the principal control the, uh, the they students? They will come so, to is, education. They will come to the college only when their children are thrown out of the college. Till then, they will and not plead and plead with the, uh, the principal to take them back. And Sanjay, there is as of now a provision that when a student passes out from the first year and moves on to the second year, the vice chancellor of the said university has to send a letter addressed to the parents okay. to ensure that his ward does not indulge in any of these activities once he enters college. But that does not happen. Now, we do, I, in five years of my college existence in my legal education here, I have not once received a leaflet, I have not once read anything about what is ragging, what is the menaces of ragging, how it should be regarded as a social evil, but they just speak about something called this healthy ragging. I don't understand what this concept called healthy ragging actually means. 
because it ends if, if healthy ragging is going to result in something like uh, something like this no, what we're experiencing no. today then it's something which we should immediately abhor immediately no, and how can you even society exists only because of lack of proper implementation and monitoring of what is happening so it is very easy to even have a debate like this but what are going to be the steps taken post this debate that What's is very important. I completely How concur with your point of view. Yeah. My point is there is there are established anti-ragging squads. But when has an anti-ragging squad ever come to your institution and ever advised or carried on anonymous searches or checks? And, and these are coming from the committee. He lacks the authority to go beyond a certain point. They report so, to the Supreme Court, ma'am. And I, I think sir only should actually finally report yeah. to the Supreme Court in the end. There is another aspect to it. I mean, correct me. One of you can correct me if I am wrong. Ragging takes place the severest form in hostels. Yes. And, and there, once upon a time, all the hostels used to be located inside the college campuses. Yes. Now we have got uh, hostels away from the campuses. And so this is a convenient alibi for the college authorities saying, we have no control because we have no hostel here. Hostel is in Salapet, I still don't dare pay. I refute that again because yes, even in a hostel, there is a warden who is appointed. Yeah. And there are certain yeah. guidelines which you should follow before. Yeah. Even when you are entering a hostel, you are still have to give and a written undertaking. There are many wardens themselves who are yeah. accused of yeah. ragging. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In so fact, the NIT also, they made they a student's post in the new day. This is why. Yeah. Yeah. Wardens yeah. themselves are guilty, then what happens? Spontaneously also. Yeah, this is so why. So we cannot watch. One more important thing. I'm trying to educate, I mean, in disseminate information. Sorry if I use it. This, we, were, we knew that wardens were not playing their roles. Wardens invariably are lecturers or professors who are teaching duties. They are just against their wishes. The management asks them to go and spend time in the hostel. They don't do either job satisfactorily, teaching or this one. And then they, that is why we said we should have dedicated wardens, a cadre of ward, wardens who are well paid, who will remain there. Our warden is equivalent of IG is a one police sir. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I, my point is... Yeah, warden is there, dedicated punishment warden posting. who spends full time there. He will have a better rapport with students and also he will understand what's happening in the hostel. Otherwise, yeah. this character, so-called warden, he comes up for two or three hours against his wishes. He already has a heavy burden of teaching and he has to come here and spend time. He just no incentive. Sanjay, I think we are, you know, forgetting this huge group in our accusations, we are forgetting this huge group which is the student body. These are 17, 18 year olds. They have huge exposure to the media today. And they still think that ragging is cool. They think that humiliation is a form of breaking ice. I think that's, we, we have to question the basics of that group of people. Absolutely. And the student body themselves should go and represent. Yeah. And if Anyway, the ragging, the ragging, uh, the perpetrators are basically a minority in institutions. So if the student body themselves take it up. But some of them become students' union presidents, right? Eventually, they even become politicians. That is a norm today. Not some but of them. Many of them. Most many of them. them. All right, on that note, it's time to slide into another short break on SL Chennai Speaks Out Season 2. When we come back, we'll have our final round, Third Empire. <laughs>